Hi everyone, Nick here from Hidden Valley Bushcraft and today I'm going to be talking to you about my most trusted bushcraft gear and the items in which I have used time and again and that always perform when I need them to. As you can tell guys, I'm down in our little cabin here in our woodland. We built this over lockdown. I've got a handful of items in front of me here. All of them have been incredibly useful to me over the years and have become have begun trusted pieces of equipment that I'll go to time and again. I'd love to hear your comments, okay, as I go through each piece here. Let me know what you've been using this summer, if you've been out with the family, whether you've been out on expeditions on your own, adventuring, wherever you've been, let me know what you've used and what trusted items of kit, you know, you would put your name to. I'm gonna start with, okay, a decent cooking pot, because what we're talking about here is bushcraft. Okay, so we're talking about kind of everything from lowland hiking, I suppose you can call it, up to about 800 meters, through all kinds of different types of landscapes, stopping off, sleeping maybe next to an open fire, maybe bivvying out and just using your gas burner. It really doesn't matter, but um, fundamentally you're going to need some good tried and tested equipment. Now, I tend to go for steel items, guys, okay? So this is an MSR pot, okay? It's got seagull written on here. Um, it's a two-part, two-part, construction in that the lid comes off, okay, and I've used this many times uh, as a plate for cooking on separately. You know, it's pretty sturdy, pretty bomb-proof stuff, and steel over titanium and over aluminium because of its strength uh, and the fact that it cooks, things tend to cook a lot more evenly in steel, yeah, and just for pure sturdiness. You know, if you tread on a titanium cup, oh, what a pain, that's your cup pretty much done. Uh, whereas you could probably stand all your body weight on a, on a Crusader mug and that's gonna go time and again. So this pot uh, has been really, really useful to me. It's got good level of depth. I can boil water in it. It's got a useful flip out handle, okay, so I can, uh, I can keep my hands fairly free and out of out of reach of getting burned too badly. It's got this little uh, mechanism here, which the lid slides over and enables me to shut the whole thing down nice and tightly. Okay, this is great because when I deploy or when I go out into the field, what I could do is I can pack this full of food items and I know that they're gonna stay in here and I'm not gonna open up and find that, you know, uh, water has ingressed into it or stuff's gone everywhere or rice has filled out into my bag, uh, everything kind of stays in the pot and it's just so good and so sturdy, uh, you know, and, and I can clean this up and you can see, I mean, it tells a story, it's, it's seen a bit of action. So a very dear, a very dear piece of uh, equipment, which, uh, which I hold close to my heart. Next up, and in the interest of talking about not burning myself, I should probably cover, look, a decent set of gloves. There's no one brand which has absolutely swept me off my feet as yet when it comes to leather gloves. I buy these ones off of, one of the you know the regular sites like Amazon or something you might find okay and they probably come in around 10 pounds I tend to go through about one of these pairs a year roughly um, as they get as they get a lot of abuse and they get they get used for while cooking etc okay next up I would say it's probably pretty imperative to have as well as having a good solid cook pot okay something that you can drink out of or cook in uh, in addition to that so um, a great combination okay and these two go very well together is the infamous Stanley nesting cup Stanley have been creating these for a number of years now and when you buy them they normally come with two uh, hard plastic nesting cups I don't tend to use those um, but it's got this lovely handle which you can pinch together to fold over and it can lock itself off and with this sliding bar it means you can suspend the thing over the fire as well very handy um, I just love the versatility of these items and the fact that you can interchangeably use them in, in a number of different scenarios so they're, they're multi or multi-use which is handy um, then you've got the Nalgene bottle now this is the one with the tapered bottom okay not the squared off bottom and that fits rather perfectly inside so one tends to nest inside of the other uh, again very very handy uh, again a st all stainless construction this one holds three quarters of a litre so not quite the golden litre but um, but very good nonetheless I've put this to good use a number of times where I've just ended up suspending this over a fire and boiling water in it to make tea or whatever and um, this is just a quick trick where you can you can loosen this plastic holder and, and the cordage comes off. So you can then put something like your fish spreaders inside or a toggle and you can suspend it over a campfire. Very versatile, very useful, okay? Tried and tested kit. Next up is the British Military Crusader mug. Now this one has seen a fair bit of action and taken a lot of punishment. Uh, and once every uh, blue moon, I absolutely scrub this thing back to life. Good solid set of handles, all steel construction. 
You can get these in stainless as well. And then to go with that as an implement, I've gone for the uh, the old Sea to Summit titanium spoon. Sea to Summit is another really good brand. It always tends to be slightly on the lighter weight scale of things, the things that they go on to produce, and they're always very handy. I think as we're heading up the table, let's jump over here now onto, as I've just mentioned, another Sea to Summit item of equipment, the kitchen sink. So team, Sea to Summit kitchen sink is quite a formidable piece of equipment in itself. All I've done to enhance it uh, and its accessibility is I put a small ring pull on here. Now I'm going to go ahead and open it up and let's all just pray that I can put it back together because yes these are notoriously quite difficult to get back into their package. As you can see here it's got a small loop which can, means it can fit on your belt. It's extremely lightweight um, but as I can attest if I haven't used it from everywhere from Afghanistan to Africa to Belize this is really brilliant piece of kit. You can see the drain hole in the bottom there okay because it's it's quite used to having to be put away wet um, and you can you can drain it off. Now when we actually look at this thing, what you've got here is a 10 litre floppy bucket, extremely sturdy. You've got this kind of off green colour on one side and then you can actually turn the whole thing inside out and use it this way round, okay, and hang this up from a tree full of water and what will happen is that this will uh, heat up, uh, the darker colour is on the outside in the let's say African sun as I was using it and then at the end of the day I can come along with this on a piece of string uh, or a piece of rope and I can tip it over myself and I can wash myself with it. You can use this for washing up, you can use this for water collection as I said. It does have an awful lot of possibilities. It's extremely sturdy and extremely well made. Now when it comes to putting the thing away you kind of have to do like a figure of eight and twist it back over on itself and then pack everything back inside there and you should have it. He says. <laughs> Here we go. Right, I think I've got it. I think I've got it. I'm going to try and get this back into here now. <laughs> if anyone's ever had to put a festival tent, a tent away for the first time, you'll know what I'm, I'm dealing with. So anyway, so that's gone back in there, okay, and I've had a bit of practice and that was still slightly tricky, but um, yeah, very manageable piece of equipment and uh, an overall very capable piece of equipment. This amazing Helicon EDC bag. Now, already this is uh, being used every single day here in the outdoors. And all I've done in addition to that is I've just popped on a quick first aid kit because I've been using my chainsaw an awful lot recently. So this is pretty much all orientated towards mass bleeding, this one. So all I've done is I've taken an Israeli bandage out of its packet, out of its sleeve. I've rewound it so that the pad, the blood soaking pad is on the outermost. All I have to do is remove the sleeve, apply it, and then start wrapping it around. So this is this is uh, uh, how to store an Israeli bandage in its sort of ready, good to go state. And that's uppermost. I've also got in here, uh, pack of tissues, some Celox gauze, again for heavy hemostatic bleeding. There'll be a tourniquet in here. Okay, so there's a tourniquet in here and there is some microporous tape. And that's pretty much all that's in that bag there because this is the one that generally uh, is anything to do with chainsaws, chainsaw bag. You might not have very long, chainsaws are pretty unforgiving. So having a uh, fast bleed trauma kit there is pretty essential. And all I've done is just weave that on there. It won't be on there for much longer, but it's just whilst I've got that work going on behind the scenes this week. But the actual bag is a Helicon EDC bag and it's been very useful so far. I'm impressed with it. Okay, next item is going to be the axe. Now this axe is a Gransfjords Brooks small forest axe and for me by far the most versatile of the axes I have in our collection uh, here at Hidden Valley Bushcraft. You've got the length there to really be able to come down and split into firewood efficiently. As you can see here it's got its protective case on the front which I can just remove hopefully with a with one hand, there we go. From memory it's about a two pound head or a pound and three quarter head and you can see the maker's mark in here. I tried to keep this pretty reasonably sharp and in good good condition and you can see there it's held with a wedge. It's, it's an every single day item uh, which fits uh, inside that bag really well. Next, I guess it's probably pretty imperative that we do actually mention some sort of uh, cutting or edge tools. Um, 
as we're on that kind of theme now, having just looked at the axe. So I tend to roll with a kind of a big knife, small knife combo, like many cultures around the world. And for me, I, as my everyday carry, I'm carrying this lovely little uh, Whittler knife. Okay, it gets a lot of use. That's why it's not gleaming and shiny. Yes, it probably needs a bit of care. And, uh, and, a, and a very small ferro rod. Okay, so what I tend to do is place the, uh, the knife back inside its sheath and there's just enough room to sneak this little ferro rod which stays in there under friction, doesn't go anywhere. And that lives in my pocket and that's always in my pocket. And my large knife option would generally be one of two as a kind of uh, a rough and ready option and one that I've used for a number of years. Uh, and again, I would absolutely put my name to would be the, Mos uh, the Mora Black. Okay, this one uh, has seen a lot of action. You can tell by just how worn down the actual blade is from where it's been sharpened again and again and again over the last couple of years. Very ergonomic rubberized grip, uh, does not break the bank. This one is in high carbon, so it does need a lot more care. Hence, it's already got some rust spots on here. So I'll need to uh, give this some attention as well. In fact, I can, I can sense a knife sharpening session coming on. Okay, in a Kydex sheath. And all I've done to enhance that is I have put a uh, Swedish Light My Fire ferrocium rod up on the inside and then I've just held that in place with a bit of bicycle inner tube uh, and some, uh, some cheap nylon cordage for lashing stuff together. Okay, these are great. I don't tend to be a big fan of these Kydex um, sheaths though as they do have a tendency the knives to be able to rattle and come out. Moving on, obviously our very own HVB knife. Now the sheath, this isn't the sheath that comes with this knife, this is just a working sheath. Now you can see from the scrapes and the, uh, the abuse that this thing has had, this is the last ever working prototype in a U handle. They're all in uh, either oak or micarta handle now, and we've even got a finish on there, which is like a gray subdued finish so there's less shine on the blade. And then you, you get that mirror polish finish as well as it comes out of the box. Brass rivets, brass lanyard tube, over accentuated pommel. It's got a number of uses. This is something else I carry every single day. Now inside the sheath itself, you've got a falcon Ivan, CD4. Okay, this is a handy piece of equipment with that ceramic side on there and the aluminium oxide side on here as well. Together they sharpen a blade and bring up a mirror polish really well once you get that kind of weighed off, get the hang of it. And then I've got a light my fire, well used ferrocene rod on here as well. So I've got the ability to make fire and keep my knife nice and sharp. I'm pretty happy in the one stop shop. Moving along again, that brings me to our toothed option. Okay, that is the, not the silky, the Laplander. A lot of you might be screaming, well, it needs to be a silky gone boy. It's much better than the, than the Laplander, etc." Look guys, I've got 20 of these in stock because I teach with them every day and they are extremely forgiving for beginners. Okay, because of that super mild steel, you really can abuse these. You can even bend them and then bend them straight again. Um, I'm not sure you'd want to do that or risk that with a silky. I might buy myself a silky at some point and, and do a whole video where I, I, I let you know my thoughts on that. For now, I can only speak for the Laplander, having used a silky a handful of times, but I know these to be good, hard working pieces of equipment, very light, extremely robust. Not gonna break the bank for price at about 15, 20 pounds. Not sure what that is in dollars, let me know. And then a brightly colored lanyard, so it's a little bit easier to find. They do make these in bright orange, at last, thank God. Um, but when I bought them, I, I didn't have an option at that time. We were still in the dark ages of the early uh, dark green color. So really, really good piece of equipment and something that goes hand in hand with my knife and my saw. I know many of you have been quite interested in what I use for cordage. So I've bought some and left the packet on. So I've got a new one I'm about to break into. Uh, now the one I normally use is black in color and I've just gone for like a bronze color here. And it's it says Commando Sale and it's in nine millimeter, okay? This is pretty much a no frills, stronger than power cord, not quite a full rope. You certainly wouldn't want to go and climb on it, but it's brilliant for ridge lines, and for setting up, for building top, for building stuff, for lashing stuff, for kind of holding things together. It's it is fairly light as well, um, and it's it's a stronger option than Paragord, as I said. Um, you could of course go ahead and make primitive cordage. If you watch some of our other videos, you watch a video on making cordage. I've done a couple of those now, and there's some more in the pipeline. But if you if you turn up prepared, you know you're 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 over halfway there, aren't you? Okay, so moving on from that, then we've got. Uh, a very nicely, neatly packed away inside its own hood poncho. I've made a couple of videos about this incredible piece of equipment. 
tried and tested time and again. I've spent, uh, I think I spent three or four nights under this at one point in an improvised shelter, having to find my own water with no sleeping bag in the middle of the British winter. It was really good. I hugely rate it. And it is the American Helicomtex poncho okay so now moving into the final part of of the kind of trusted gear which you're going to need as much as i did an amazing video on natural navigation it is also extremely helpful to learn how to orientate yourself in the great outdoors okay and to do that you're going to need a couple of pieces of equipment in no particular order one great piece of equipment which has been really really handy to me is the base plate compass now for my base plate compass option, I go with silver. It's what I used in the military as a British Royal Marine Commando, uh, and it's what I'd use time and again, given the choice. It's got all kinds of different scales, according, you know, that I can then apply to different maps and different uh, map sizes. It, this one is in degrees. Okay, in the British military, I had to learn to use this in mils. Um, but I now operate in degrees. And then you can see on the lanyard here, um, there are some different scales running up my arm. Okay, and these are so that I can measure out distance and I can kind of bend them around on the map and work out how far I'm gonna to have to walk on a leg and be a lot more accurate than just counting across grid squares. It is luminescent, okay, so this little piece here lights up as does the little piece here, okay, in the gate. So that lights up as well as that uh, direction of travel arrow. And you can line these up in the middle of the dark uh, and they are extremely, extremely useful. To go with my base plate compass, uh, here in the Chew Valley where I operate, where I'm leading expeditions or little micro adventures, bushcraft style, from one camp, from this place here over to the other camp, we do roughly 25 kilometers uh, with clients on that particular trip. So I've got myself a custom made OS Explorer map, okay, of the Chew Valley. And so these two go hand in hand. On a one in 25,000, this gives me the greater level of detail to uh, teach people to learn to read map to ground. Um, to learn to use those navigational clues. But then we have the compass and the map as our kind of verification of learning, uh, which is really good. And then to house that, because the great British weather is atrocious at times, we have the Ortleap bag. Now I used an Ortleap bag uh, in the Royal Marines. It's a kind of a, a Velcro roll top bag. Okay, um, you can see there, it says Ortleap. Now these are pretty good. Um, at doing what they say they're going to do. You can read the map nice and clearly. You can see through it there. You know, that's kind of, that's pretty translucent. Um, they come with a lanyard on there, which is extremely helpful. Okay, so you can put the thing around your neck if you have to. I would normally keep mine probably around my neck and stuffed on the inside of my jacket so I can just bring it up as and when I need. When I'm actually on the trail, if not, it's going to live in the top of my bag. Good to go. That's like my most trusted items i build loads of stuff in and around i test stuff all the time i play with multitudes of using ex-military stuff and stuff i see floating around on the market that takes my eye i'll always fall back on uh, good quality cordage decent cutting tools steel for cooking in a quality axe a well-made axe that kitchen sink is a luxury item well-made gloves and good navigational gear and something decent to sleep under or on or in and then you know something something you can carry this stuff in uh, is also very important 